Hey, how's it going? It's Manny again uh, with another video on voltage drop and I'm going to do another pictorial just to explain how voltage works. So just moving on over to the setup over here. First, let's do a little bit of housekeeping. Now this is Ontario Canadian code and this is from voltage drop applicable to ESA Bulletin 8-6-0 um, which is Rule 8-102 in the code book. Now it says your overcurrent protection using 15 amps K okay, of 15 amps overcurrent protection uh, rating breaker using a 14 gauge wire okay you can go a total distance of 38 meters which is 125 feet okay so from the point of source okay which is uh, your feed okay from the consumer side of the panel okay all the way to the point furthest point of utilization it cannot surpass or exceed 125 feet okay or 38 meters using 14 gauge okay this is applicable okay with different gauges of wire this is why we have this chart to follow now if you're looking at this chart over here right this is the main chart that you want to look and again you'll find this in 8-102 Okay, if you Google that, you'll see Canadian code. Now, just a little bit uh, to take note of. Now, let me just get close here. If you're using lengths of 12 aug copper, right, you're going to be able to go to first point where you feed it, and from there on in, you'll have numeric values specifying your maximum permissible distance from that point onwards. So the left hand side has the numeric values using 12 gauge in meters. In brackets uh, the numeric value is in feet. That coincides with this column here. Now if you go to a plug or a switch using 5 meters of 12 aug, that means you can go a total of 34.9, basically 35 feet, uh, sorry, meters, which is going to be 114 feet. Similarly, if you go 10 meters out, 33 uh, feet out, to your first device plug or switch feeding it in 12 aug 12 number 12 okay from that device you can span out branch out a total of 31.7 meters or 104 feet now notice when you go short you can go far but when you go further you the distance will decrease. This is because of resistance. The resistance in the wire itself using the copper wire. So if you're going let's say a maximum of 40 meters which is quite a distance which is 131 feet let's say you're in a mansion okay this is residential by the way let's say you're in a mansion um, and you go 131 feet, which is very far using 12 aug, you can only go after that distance to your first device, let's say it's a three gang or a two gang, 12.9 uh, meters or 42 feet thereof, okay? So this chart is very important to know, to refer to, okay, using voltage drop. Now, I'm gonna demonstrate further with this pictorial drawing that I put together here and just let you look at it before I start uh, wiring it now as I mentioned this is the Canadian Ontario code electrical code 
This is the year 2015-2015, Rule 8-102. Okay, I write that because these things get amended. They might change in the future or what have you. Okay, so this is a new code for us. And now I'm gonna. I just went through the housekeeping of 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 it in the code. Now. I am going to show you how best to wire this and give you the reason why you would want to wire it this way and how voltage drop works applicable to the wiring method and from the point okay of service or source to the furthest point of utilization cannot exceed 125 feet. So this is a house, I just kept it simple. We have bedroom one, bedroom two, and bedroom three. We have a number of plugs which I laid out, total of 12 plugs, okay? We're just gonna focus on the plugs here. And I have them all laid out as I just mentioned. We have the door swings. Here's the doors opening up with the swings. Uh, here's your stairs, just to give you a visual of the layout, okay? Now, Here's our panel, as I just mentioned. Let's say this is a raised bungalow, and on the first floor, there's no basement, is the panel, okay? Um, so there it is. So from underneath, let's say I decide to go, okay, with number 12 gauge, I drop this down, I don't go up and over, I drop this down, okay, from here, right to home run using 12 gauge number 12 okay I come to the first plug over here okay now let's say that total right there is I don't know 12 feet referring to your chart here 12 feet okay anywhere between okay 16 feet okay I can go now from that receptacle I can go out 114 feet, which is quite far, right? Now, I did that in 12, right? I dropped it down 12 feet down, okay, directly down. Now I can pick up all these plugs at a total distance of 114 feet, right? But you don't want to go from here in and out, 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 in and out. You wouldn't want to go in and out. The best thing to, for you to do is to go to break your branches, okay, and split them and make three wire plugs. And I'll show you why. So from here, okay, let me just kind of hold this steady as much as possible. I'm going to do this quickly. I would go here. I would go here. Okay. I would go here. I would go here. All right. I would run a line here. I would then run a line here. I would make this a three wire plug and pick up these two guys. Okay. From here, I would go here. Right. I would go then here and then here. There, I've picked everything up. These are all 14.2, all 14.2 gauge wire. Okay, now when it comes to voltage drop, right, what you're looking at, okay, as I said, right. From your panel, okay, to the furthest point of utilization, okay, cannot exceed 114 feet, right? So if I'm looking at this diagram, right, the furthest point of utilization, and I'll highlight it for you, is right here. Here here, 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 and here. I highlighted it for you. 
from here to here, I want 12 feet. This comes over here is my, if you're thinking in linear terms, in linear terms, if I get this and I stretch out this line, okay, this whole line is not going to exceed 114 feet. That's very far, okay? I could have even fed this in 14.2, but just for trying to explain it and the whole concept of voltage drop and referring it to the chart, I just did it that way. But I could have actually fed this arc fault feed, okay, with a 14.2, because this distance is the only one that you're counting. This becomes ex exempt. This line is exempt because from here, okay, to here is not going to exceed 125 feet, okay, relative to the code, okay, using 14.2, right? The same thing with this, from here to here will not exceed, okay, 114, uh, sorry, 125 feet using, okay, 14, 14 gauge, right? It's because I split it in a three wire here and a three wire here. This becomes exempt. This becomes exempt because the power is going to come here, here, and return through the neutral, right? So any plugs or devices or other kinds of equipment that's in there is going to compete with the same line voltage, right? And there's going to be enough juice on the same line voltage, okay? Because it's going to have a quick return, right? to the source, it won't affect the voltage drop. This is what you're focused on when you're drilling and pulling. You're focused on the service, point of service, all the way to the furthest point of utilization, which is here, okay? And that's how voltage drop works, okay? Um, my next video, I'm going to talk about um, switches, the switching arrangement, and hopefully you turn, tune in to that, and you'll get a better understanding. Let you look at this for a minute, and that's how it is in voltage drop, right, uh, for this diagram, okay? And just to kind of expand a little bit longer, right, with voltage drop, right, to give you an understanding basically how it works and how it's applied, let's say you, on your plan, okay, you have to feed, okay, a cooktop, okay, a gas cooktop and a hood fan, right? This is not, this is, this is just electric cooktop, but let's say this would be a gas appliance for a cooktop, right? And then you have a hood fan right? It would be best for you to wire it with a 14.3. Shared neutral for both appliances, carrying it out back to the source. And I'll give you a reason, okay? You can still use 14.2 to wire up both the cooktop, which is probably at, let's say, the gas cooktop is going to work off gas, okay? But it also has the, the uh, cooktop itself, which you can probably fry eggs right on it or what have you. And it's gas, so it's working off gas, not working off electric. But there is going to be components on it, okay? Uh, it might have an enunciator, okay, that are going to be drawing uh, voltage as well, okay? Your light is going to be on, your fan's going to be running as well, okay? If you're using 14.2, okay, it's not a question of load or amperage that is going to affect the system. Because, again, let's say the hood fan is working at 2 or 3 amps because it has a heavy motor. And let's say this cooktop is going to be at, I don't know, 7, 8 amps. You're still under the 12 amps, okay, needed to supply um, both appliances at 80% value, right? You have enough power for both. But it would be better, okay, would be better practice for you to run 14.3, okay? Because now you have a double pole breaker, okay? You have the cooktop, 
okay, that's going to be working off the black line, and your hood fan, that's going to be working off your red line. So in terms of voltage drop, they could be both running at max, okay, and they both have separate line voltages, okay, because they're a shared neutral, and through the breaker itself, you gave them both 15 amp breakers a piece. Okay, so now they're not competing off the same line voltage, which is going to enable both appliances, give them more longevity, make them work more efficient and for longer periods of time. All right, so this is the whole kind of concept of voltage drop, and it gets a little bit more into it when you're hooking up motors, but that was just kind of like a brief overview of it. And here's the diagram again. And again, the next video I'll be discussing switching arrangement. And I already have it prepared, ready to go in the next video. Thanks for watching.